Oh, looks like we're ready to start game one here. Daniel vs. Dark. Very much expect to see Daniel getting USA back on track here. But what an exciting prospect this match is, nonetheless. Can Dark do any damage to Daniel's defense? Will he be able to hit any big clips? Will Daniel even try and take him on in that aspect of the game? Will we see any Dandroid today? Or will it be potentially um, a little bit of a freestyle 1v1? So far, no need for any kind of flashiness from Daniel. Dark just sails straight past the ball. I'm not sure what he was thinking on that play. He went way, way off. And he will manage to surprise Daniel with his trademark kickoff. Oh, and a ceiling pinch as well. Dark has really popped off there. <laughs> his own signature kickoff fakes out Daniel and then the ceiling pinch slots the ball past him before Daniel can get there. Dark started off this game at a million miles an hour. Is that really the way to beat Daniel? I would argue that uh, it isn't for most players, but there is... I think there's two cases where I've seen this work against Daniel, actually. I was going to say one. There's one series I remember this working against Daniel. I think there's actually two. Um, I'll, I'll give you guys a chance in chat if you want to try and guess or remember what those series were. Who were the two players, chat, who beat Daniel with pure speed and aggression. There were two players who have done it. They were both uh, matches that were played on the European server, interestingly enough. Dark trying to emulate those wins. You guys have got them both, Drally and Naupo. If Dark can play a uh, peak Drally, peak Naupo level performance, then okay, sure. He's got a chance to beat Daniel because we have seen players do that in the past. We've seen players uh, just completely blitz him on the EU server with non-stop aggression. But these days, I, I think Daniel's at a higher level than he was for either of those losses. I think Daniel right now is a better version of himself than he was when he lost to Drally, a better version of himself than he was when he lost to uh, Naupo on the European server. And I don't think I've seen uh, Dark consistently perform at an adequate level yet. We've seen peaks from Dark that are up there, but consistent best of five series start to finish at that level. Uh, that's something I've not seen before, so he's gonna need to he's gonna need to absolutely prime here if he's gonna take down Daniel using that style. So far so good. Daniel's actually looked a bit sluggish to kick things off. Darks had uh, tricks on the kickoff that are all seemingly working out pretty well. Mechanically, he is really going for this. Just absolutely firing in all cylinders. How is Daniel gonna deal with this? Is he gonna fight fire with fire? Is he gonna go for a full-on mechanical war? Or like I mentioned earlier, will we see the reappearance of Dandroid. He's leaning a bit more Dandroid right now. We're not seeing full Dandroid, but definitely leaning a bit more towards Dandroid at the moment. Uh, he's completely out of boost on this play. Dark's outpaced him for the first three minutes. Just absolutely zooming around the field with no regard for who he's up against. Flip reset coming in for a Dark. And the Pogo! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Oh, he didn't have to wait long for Dark to peek. And there is no time for Daniel to react. He's bounced straight back into the ball and dodged to send it right past the American. Daniel left completely stranded, purely a spectator in the play. That makes two of us in the lobby and a whole lot more outside it. What a performance so far from Dark. He's up 5-1. His kickoffs have been fan absolutely fantastic here. He's Got such a good solid standard kickoff to fall back on. So when he's done with all the tricks, here comes another one, by the way, and it's worked again. I mean, this is the third time that he's faked Daniel out with his uh, extremely convincing fake kickoffs. Not going to get a goal off the back of this one, but still a very strong position for himself and more time wasted that Daniel desperately needs. That's three successful fake kickoffs. Now a fake in the air. Dark is absolutely dominating in a way that no one saw coming. He went, this is why I always say it's so important to mix up the kickoffs in ones. If you just do the same kickoff over and over again, your opponent can get into a rhythm, they can get into their flow state, and they can just start to um, you know, get better and better and play perfectly with their own strategy. But if you're faking every now and then, if you're just changing up your approach timing, and then every now and then throwing in, um, I guess, a hard ball, then... It's very difficult for your opponent to get into a rhythm, and that's what Dark's done so well here. He's faked Daniel on three kickoffs, and he's 
hit his standard kickoffs exceptionally well also. Now, if I'm dark in this position, I'm wasting time. I don't think he should be sending hard shots towards Daniel. He's got less than 100 seconds to play and a five goal lead secured. Now, you don't want to give Daniel opportunities to come back because, I mean, it is Daniel we're up against here um, from the blue POV. And his level recently has been something that very few players have been able to match. But Dark is sticking to the game plan. He's decided that he is going to just go into this and play like he's up against a random and ranked he's never heard of. He's showing Daniel no respect, and so far, it has worked out pretty well. But yeah, D Daniel's countered in there. I mean, Dark has just sent, absolutely sent it to every ball. He has not slowed down for a moment in this game, and he gets a fourth fake kickoff to work. This is crazy to witness. I mean, he really is so convincing with his fake kickoffs. The approach looks identical, but here he comes again. Trying to reset on Daniel from close range. He's got a recovery off the back of this. I like to see that from Dark, because although he's blitzed Daniel at the start of game one, he really shouldn't be taking risks here. Daniel is clinical with the few responses that he gets. So heavy hit from Dark counter. Can Daniel really come back here? The kickoffs have not gone his way, but he's had a bit of time to figure Dark out now. He's seen all the tricks. Dark misses again, but Daniel's open net goes wide. Well, there was an opportunity and a half for Daniel to cut the, the lead down to just two goals. What a chance that would have been. Dark with the boost deal. Daniel threatening a shot. Dark's able to get there just in time and cut it off. Now here comes Daniel with the late aggression. Dark sees the bump coming a mile away. And all he needs is back corner possession here. And the game is his. And that's where he's going to head. Side to side movement from Dark. Figures that just one more successful goal will seal the deal. Can Daniel make anything happen? I don't think it's possible anymore. He needed a direct goal there. Doesn't get one. Dark takes game one and absolutely shocks the world with how he's done it. I, I thought surely if you know if Dark comes in and wins a game against Daniel, it'll probably be because uh, you know, Daniel's just missed an open net or something and given Dark an easy goal. It'll probably be, be because you know Daniel's made a few mistakes here and there and not look like himself, but that's not really what we saw here. We didn't even have a chance for Daniel to look like himself because Dark just came in and absolutely ran the show. He, he dominated. Absolutely dominated in game one. Yeah, like I mentioned, this is not something that's brand new to Daniel on this server, but this is something that, for me, is a big, big surprise. Something I never thought we'd see today. You know, Daniel's been in peak form recently. His all-time best and just honestly some of the absolute best 1v1 level that we've ever seen. Um, so if this is Daniel, who's recently, and I mean very recently, looked like, no question about it, top two in the world. No, absolutely no question. Well, maybe say no question, top three, but in my opinion, no question, top two in the world. And Dark, who I, I don't think has been top 25 in the world, uh, with his results at least. He's got the potential, no one's ever uh, doubted that, but Boy, is he delivering here once again. He beats Daniel to the punch. And what on earth are we witnessing? Dark, Dark's out up by two. He's taken off in front of the ball, lands the reset. And then pre-flips to get the ball past Daniel again. What, what are we witnessing, ladies and gentlemen? Where is Daniel's stability that we're used to seeing from him? Well, there it is. And not a moment too soon. He needs to keep the scoreline close here. Confidence for Dark must be through the roof right now. Daniel has to try and stop him in his tracks here. And yeah, I've, I've, I've been so surprised by the outcome of this. Uh, I've forgotten to update the overlay as well. I mean, <laughs> I'm just as surprised as you guys. I'll be honest, I was predicting Daniel winning 3-0 in this. I honestly was. I thought Daniel was going to sweep Dark. This is like something I've never seen before. I've never seen Dark come out with this much confidence against a player at Daniel's level. Every touch has been a boomer, every landing's been immaculate. I think he's been a bit over aggressive in some positions, but when your overall strategy is to just go in there and show no respect to your opponent, can you really blame him? Dark stun him again. <laughs> he's bogoed to back up Daniel. And then snipes the top corner with a ground shot. So Dark's got a flip there. That's why Daniel retreats. And the whole time Dark's lining up as if he's going to shoot the ball. He's lining up as if he's going to flick the ball, but he just lets it bounce and all of that to gain territory. And once he's in point blank range, 
He's got the top corner shot to finish off the whole sequence. Absolutely extraordinary. Dark is different. He's one of a kind. And he is making Daniel look second best by a mile at the moment. He almost clips on him again. Can Daniel fight fire with fire as he takes to the sky himself? Reset was there. The shot on target wasn't. Daniel comes away with the boost advantage, though. This is a strong position for him, but he didn't get the boost steal. Dark grabs 100 in the back corner. Daniel coming in for the bump, and he lands it. Snipe from Daniel. Dark trying to go underneath him and save the shot. And Daniel saw exactly what was coming. Leans at the last moment to counter Dark's positioning. No skill cringe, noob. Oh my goodness. No loyalty, even Daniel. Getting all the hate for scoring, in my opinion. What's the opposite of cringe? I don't actually know. I, I started that sentence before realizing where it was going to finish. Dark's actually pre-jumped onto the ceiling here to get a flip back. Fakes a reverse challenge. And then catches the ball on the back wall. He's defended that really well. Daniel is trying to get Dark to jump. Dark just refused. Inverted half flip to recover off the back of a boost seal. And Daniel cautiously and carefully clawing his, his way back into the series here. Dark checking to see just how close Daniel was there. He didn't want to leave himself susceptible to a demo. Now he's starting to back off a little bit. Oh, that's a heavy hit. Daniel slams in a wall shot, ties the game. Positional brilliance from Daniel. Dark to slow down ever so slightly. He's tried to let Daniel hit the ball to him, but Daniel has just kept on carefully. Playing every ball into positions he can get to. Now he's missed an open net there. Dark's off the wall again. Pre-flip to save some boost. And the flip reset is good. Dark can not miss a flip reset right now. Every single time he shoots these, it's turning into goals. Two minutes and 13 left. You know, if there's anyone who can come back from a two-game deficit in a matchup like this, it would be Daniel. He would be, you know... Right up there with top picks to come back. Oh my, what a save by Daniel. The Dark's not going to be on him here. Daniel turns quicker of the two players. Dark with a little bit of a trip on him. Is he going to get back in time to save the double? No, he's not. Daniel slots in a fourth and ties the game once more. He's had the bursts of pace to keep up with Dark in this game. He's really kind of evened out that aspect of the war. And the worrying thing for Dark is I don't know if he does have that slow game adaptation that we saw from Kaleers in the previous series. You know, when AJ started to match Kalir's blow for blow, Kalir just switched it up and defended for one game. Completely surprised AJ with the defensive stance that he took. I'm not sure if Dark has that in the back pocket, especially against a player like Daniel. But he's not going to go for it. He's just going to keep on clipping. This time it's a mind game. Well, one thing is certain. Daniel's defense has been completely flattened by Dark's offense so far. This is something we've not seen in a while. And it's not just the pace, it's the creativity as well. The fake kickoffs continue to work. Yet another one secures possession for Dark, who remains ahead by one. This is just bad news for Daniel. He desperately needs to control the possession here. Dark's way out of the game, though. Daniel had half a chance to shoot. Great positioning by Dark, denying Daniel. The immediate bump on target. Dark's trying to counter him here. He comes in from an angle the Dark, the Daniel didn't see coming, and he's up by two now. Well, Daniel had control. He thought that he had Dark in an uncomfortable position, and then suddenly Dark just comes out of the defensive blind spot and runs the ball down the middle of the pitch. As usual, Dark just slotting those legit kickoffs in between multiple successful fakes. He's pre-jumped off his own... <laughs> Ceiling here, what on earth is this? Dark's freestyling at defense. I don't think a boost. Oh, it is gonna spawn for him. My goodness. He can't he can't make a mistake at this point. He actually cannot make a mistake. Dark is at the moment unplayable. And Daniel's running out of time. It's gonna be a three-goal game. Daniel commits. I mean, I say I say he's running out of time. He tries to make something happen with a 50 in the back corner, but Dark just absorbs it. And away he goes for a seventh goal. This is completely unprecedented, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that we have, I think, never seen before. When, when Drally beat Daniel, they were both in the conversation for best in the world. When, when Naupo beat Daniel 
I think both were, you know, around about the same level as well. They were close. But uh, you, no one is putting Dark anywhere near Daniel's level these days. No one. I, I had them miles apart in my recent top 25. But, you know, the reason for that is because although Dark peaks at a level no one else can match in offense, he doesn't do it consistently. Until now, everything he's done has looked completely undefendable. Daniel down by two games. And the USA A-team, one of the tournament favorites, are about to be down by two series. Unless Daniel can reverse sweep the best version of Dark that we've ever seen. Absolutely insane. Easily the most impressive version of Dark we've ever seen. Daniel's not had a chance to establish his usual game. He just cannot handle the offense that's coming towards him. But, you know, to be to be fair to Daniel, I think probably it, it, the only name that I think would have a chance of defending these kind of shots would be Rawas. That's the, literally the only name. And that's because Rawas' defense is, I think, unmatched. But I think even Rawas would be scratching his head at what to do against some of these shots. I think even Rawas would be thinking, well, how are you supposed to save that? <laughs> what on earth has he done there? And uh, just have to raise his hands and applaud an expertly executed offensive strategy. Dark's faked them out again. Daniel just has no read on Dark's fake kickoff, and he's got no way to stop the offense that comes towards him off the back of it. I mean, look, at it's just, it's, it's rinse and repeat. Dark just fakes the kickoff, gets the ball, and then he flip resets on Daniel, pogos on Daniel, manages to squeeze the ball past. You know, I've watched most of, most of these fake kickoffs from Dark, uh, or from Dark's POV. That one Daniel did see, but you'll have noticed that it's very, very similar. I mean, look at that. The, the way that Dark moves his, his nameplate when he fakes these kickoffs, is so similar to the way that the nameplate moves when you're flipping towards the ball. And that's what makes it so difficult for players to to read. And so difficult for players to counter. Daniel spotted that one and he immediately scored. And he's going to score again. Daniel, 2-1 up. And it's one read on a kickoff play. And now one read on a defensive air dribble. So Daniel with two huge, huge reads comes out on top and consecutive plays. How many more of those can he pull out the bag? I think, you know, if Daniel could have set one game, suddenly the pressure's right back onto Dark. Because Dark will know that he's up against it here. He'll know that he's the underdog. He'll know that Daniel, even on the EU server, is the favorite to beat him. Because he's been here before. He's done this so many times. He knows how to produce the best play late in a series and adapt to his opponent. But will Dark have that same consistency late on in this series? That's the real question here. I'm surprised Daniel didn't just throw himself at that ball there. I thought he would just try and make himself as big as possible. Um, there's no VOD. I'll, I'll enable the VOD after this stream is done um, if you want to catch the earlier games. Daniel immediately punishes a mistake from Dark. He's outplayed him a couple times. Now Dark with an unforced error. Gets a bit greedy for the back corner boost and that is a simple mistake that Daniel will not uh, let go uncontested. Dark, quite happy to go back to Sander kickoffs. Like I said, he's got a very good Sander kickoff when he feels like his opponent's got a read on his fakes. A lot of boost being used here by Dark. Daniel just out positioning him. Dark fakes the back corner boost grab, instead plays the ball, and Daniel didn't see that one coming. Well, that's a huge play by Dark. It might not look like much, but Dark fakes the boost grab, turns towards the ball at the last second. Daniel fully expected Dark to be going for the boost there, knowing that Dark was running out of boost. Still the aggression for Dark that comes out on top in most of these exchanges. Daniel could have actually had the ball in that play. Didn't want to overextend. Well, Dark's just messed up, hasn't he? Yeah, Daniel's got an open net here. Dark's not going to get there. Surely. Okay, well, I, th I thought Daniel was at the post somehow, but he's... <laughs> He's going to gladly see that it's bounced in. He tried to reset on the open net and almost hit the post. Yeah, Dark's had a couple of unforced errors in this game, and it's these, these are the sort of things that we are used to seeing from him. And I'm not trying to, you know, uh, 
not trying to un downplay what he's done so far at all, but the reason why most of us would have, would have expected Daniel to be victorious in this matchup, or one of the reasons why, is because Dark, can, you know, to be able to consistently produce the level that he produced in games one and two is something he's never done before. Um, I guess a player like Daniel, he's not been able to just blitz out two games and just absolutely dominate. Well spotted with the demo on that play. He trails by three, but lots of time left on a defensive high ball to play with. Double reset for Dark. He misses the contact on the second flip, though. And he doesn't get a trip on Daniel either. Dark having to fake the ball and just let Daniel take it. Daniel just rolls it right at him. Dark flies back down. Oh, Daniel tried to counter him here. Has he saved this? Yes, he has. Well, Dark a bit too slow on the open net. After... Diving downwards and saving what could have been a seventh goal from Daniel. Dark trying to snipe Daniel on the landing here. Wants the demo. Doesn't time it correctly though, but he has bumped Daniel away from the boost. He goes for the difficult air dribble. A lot of boost being used to get back to the ball here. And now the mistakes are coming through from Dark. He loses control once again. And Daniel slow rolls him to put a seventh goal in. Well, Daniel will know that if Dark continues to make mistakes at this rate, he will win this series. He can just sit back and wait for the mistakes to happen and roll the ball into the open net. Will he want to just wait for those mistakes to happen? I'm not sure because, you know, if Dark could just produce one more game, like we saw in game one and two, if he could just do that one more time out of the remaining two and a half games, then Daniel will be in a world of trouble. Still, three goals between the two players. In game three, Daniels controlled Dark in this third game much more comfortably than he did previously. What a save. Daniel pinches it off his own crossbar. Dark loops back around. Strikes again. Seals the boost from both corners. He's just peppering the backboard at the moment. Daniel calmly waiting for Dark to be done. And there is the opening. Dark's overextended again. And Daniel scores an eighth time. Dark not interested in slowing down and trying to pick his spot there. I think that would have probably been the correct play, but Dark's just trying to go for top corner shots every single time. He's just trying to boom the ball at every opportunity. Like I said earlier, I can't really fault him for it. It's worked up until now. You know, a couple of mistakes in game three. Shouldn't be crushing to his confidence. I do think that if game four goes much the same way this one did, then we could see Dark trying to play out a bit more of a careful strategy and just reel himself in a little bit because he is he, he's making mistakes that are, that are not necessary and when I, when I say not necessary what I mean is sometimes in Rocket League you make, you make a mistake and uh, it's execution on your offense yeah he says go next Daniel takes game three um, pretty easily actually dark with too many unforced errors um, but yeah what I was saying there what I was trying to explain is that if Dark makes mistakes with the execution in his offense, I don't think he's going to mind too much because he knows that if he just did that correctly, it would work. But, you know, does he need to just drive to the corner for boost when Daniel's lining up a shot? I don't think so. Does he need to throw himself in for, in for a challenge when Daniel's lining up a, a defensive air dribble? I don't think so either. You know, there were, there were two or three plays in this game where Dark really, I think, just threw himself at the ball in positions that you should just be a little bit more patient in. When he had Daniel backed into his goal at the tail end of this game on zero boost. Did he need to just rattle the crossbar three times in a row? Probably not. He could have just tried to place it or maybe even pop bump Daniel. Something a bit more consistent would have done the job for most players. Um, but you know, he's coming with a game plan today to just play faster than Daniel and to uh, just consistently clip him. And credit to him, it's worked two games in a row. But this is the turning point. Daniel's got one on the board. And now it's up to Dark to either return to his game one and two level of consistency or reel himself in just slightly and stop throwing himself in um, every single time that Daniel's got the ball. Daniel's going to see... I've, I've got a feeling Daniel's going to see those plays coming, especially after three games of non-stop aggression um, from his opponent. Psychic Coconut, thanks to the two-month prime. Welcome back to the channel. Cat Murphy, thanks to the 41-month 40, tier one. 
And uh, thank you as well, 32 month frame from Cheese Dutch. Dark just about surviving there. He's accidentally down with Daniel, actually. Daniel spawns far side. That's not where he wanted to be, and it's 1 0 Dark. I reckon that was an accidental demo by Dark. He just tried to get as much speed as possible, and Daniel ended up driving right by him. Is this Dark's best performance so far? Oh, absolutely. This is this is by far the best performance, but Daniel's starting to get a read on that kickoff. What change that's going to be if he can keep seeing that kickoff coming. Just sniping the ball at the, at the post. It looks like Dark wasn't even anticipating the chance of Daniel reading this. Yeah, games one and two... Every single fake kickoff worked for Dark. And uh, games three and four, Daniel's actually stopped the majority of them. So Dark's probably going to only sneak those in every now and then. And I, honestly, I'd be surprised if he does it again on the offset spawn. He might do it on the diagonal spawn in positions like these. So he does go for it here. Um, but Daniel actually counters it with a half flip. So he says, OK, sure, Dark, you can have the ball. I'm going to take 100 boost and defend your shot, which he does, 2-2. Two -two. So Daniel really starting to upgrade his kickoff game in the mid middle of the series here and that drastically increases his chances coming away victorious but it's not like Dark has a like I keep mentioning it's not like he's got a bad normal kickoff he's come away with a possession play here did he get that second reset he did he definitely got that third one has to wave dash the landing though wave goodbye to the offensive play Dark reading the crossbar here Daniel in the area but patiently waiting to see what Dark's going to do. Of course, Dark's just going to charge forward. If he has a chance to um, make a play on the ball, of course he will, based on what we've seen so far today. He doesn't want to have to react to Daniel's plays. Dark has decided in this matchup that if he ends up in defense against Daniel, it's bad news. So he's going to try and stay on the ball, and he's going to try and stay challenging. Ceiling reset. Another one on the ball. A high shot follows it. Daniel's equal to it. Dark's level's definitely more back towards that game one and two. Daniel has leveled up as well. Fake from Dark. We'll give him half a chance, but Daniel's there to cut it off. Dark threatening demos in these positions, but Daniel's more than aware. Stays safe. Dark dangerously close to being demoed himself in that play. Daniel calls his bluff on the fake challenge. Dark backing off. Daniel looking for the bump, but Dark... Oh, he was there, but he missed the save. Well, Dark did well to get away from Daniel here but he missed the save after it all he actually bumped Daniel but dodged the wrong way on his goal line did the hard part another unforced error for Dark gives Daniel yet another lead Dark throwing himself around in a circle but Daniel builds up enough speed to demo him Dark spawns far side he's charging into the play once again Daniel can see him coming of course he actually air dribbles off to the side and that's going to be a winning angle for him, surely. Well, Dark actually collects the possession. Well, Daniel won't be happy with how that ball bounced. Dark's got him in his sights. The flick is on. Daniel's defense looking like it's finally capable of stopping Dark from just destroying him. Shuts down yet another aerial play. Can Daniel, Dan Daniel get around it? He's going to need to slow play this. Dark just enough of a strong 50 for now but he's panicking a little bit Daniel supplying the squeeze has a dodge to play with shoots low again Dark almost able to break away there solid defensive stand by him Daniel went low twice in a row Dark was able to spy both those shots come in will Daniel switch back to the air dribble bump it's been a massive source of success for him. It's not an irritable bump this time, but it's the same kind of idea. He trips Dark on the landing and puts himself two goals ahead. Daniel finds a way. It's not been easy for him, but he has found an avenue that he can thrive in. Another brave fake kickoff for Dark. This is something that Daniel has countered the last few times now. He counters it again. Daniel decides not to air dribble this one. Instead, shoots low, and Dark's pre jump gets countered again. Dark Daniel is just winning this match, winning this game with superior decision making, with world class adaptation, and an evolution of his kickoff game. Dark with his best chance for a while, and he gets it. 
still got plenty of time, but the dark offensive train has definitely ground to a halt here. The aerial game that Daniel could not stop earlier on has been absent for a good while. Will Dark make another appearance? Oh, he cuts in field, tries to shoot down immediately here. Did he expect Daniel to think about pre-jumping, perhaps? Daniel far too careful, far too consistent to make those kind of mistakes. And Dark is nowhere to be seen in defense. Daniel air doubles it right past him. He wanted the wall demo, but Daniel safely dribbles in field and pinches it on target from close range. Minute and 13 to go. It's Daniel's fake kickoff that gets him a possession now. You know that all he has to do at this moment is waste time. Something I do expect to see him do. Daniel playing the ball around Dark. He's been demoed for his trouble here. And Dark will make a beeline for the wall. Didn't need to do that. Could have been a ground dribble. But of course, Dark prefers to go the high route. Daniel charges in. As soon as he sniffed the pogo coming towards him, close the distance and shut it down. Daniel trying to put the game beyond all doubt. He's got Dark completely stuck in defense here. Daniel going to say double the ball side to side and guarantee the win here. He wants one more. And he, he's going to get it as well. Daniel up by four. He's started to counter Dark's kickoffs. He started to counter Dark's aerial game. And he has completely taken control of a series that couldn't have gone any worse for him in games one and two. Now the ball's in Dark's score. What is he going to do in game five? What kind of plays are we likely to see when it's all on the line? Will he continue? to just throw himself at Daniel and trust his mechanics to get the job done or will we see a bit more of a positional battle I think you know Dark's just got to go completely all in I really do think that's his best winning strategy you know if you ask me at the start of today has Dark got a chance of beating Daniel in a positional game has he got a chance of beating Daniel in a strategical game I would tell you no, I don't think he does. I think Daniel's got better boost management. I think he's got better decision making once you get into the midfield. And I think he's just got overall a higher floor of gameplay to rely on. If Dark is going to win this, he needs to pop off like he did in the first two games. But it's going to be harder than ever. Daniel's started to counter his kickoffs. He's started to counter the aerials. Does Dark have another level to go to? We saw a Pogo, I think we saw a Pogo goal, yeah, we saw a Pogo goal in game one from Dark. We saw uh, Pogo leading to a goal in game two, but the two games that Daniel has taken back to back now, he's read the majority of the fake kickoffs and he's not allowed Dark to score a Pogo goal. So as long as he can keep doing that, step one's done. He read the first fake kickoff and he scores off the back of it as well. Dark trying to just collect the ball. Daniel refusing to just give it to him for free here. Like that's all you got to do in 1v1 sometimes is put the ball in an awkward position and see if your opponent will make a mistake. Still fake kickoffs coming in for Dark. He gets one to work. Looks like he's pretty set on sticking to that as a resource. Delayed flick goes off the inside of the post. Daniel crunches a long shot forwards. And he reads the bounce more quickly than Dark did. 2-0. It is one-way traffic in the opposite direction. Daniel looks unstoppable. I'm thinking surely we're not going to see more fake kickoffs. And just when Dark stops going for them, Daniel makes one happen, but <laughs> it doesn't work out. I mean, I like to see Daniel trying it, but that was not at all convincing. When Dark's made that kickoff work, he's moved his nameplate the exact same way you usually would. That time Daniel just sat still, so Dark knew exactly what was happening. And yeah, da Daniel doesn't have a lot of experience in that position. Dark does. I don't think that is the way. Uh, that Daniel stays one step ahead. Don't expect to see that again, unless it's on the diagonal spawn. Dark running out of boosts here. Daniel trips him up in the back corner. Quick recovery from Dark. Keeps him in the play, but a bad touch will give Daniel the ball again. He says Daniel to shoot this on first time. Thinks about it. Actually goes low again. Trying to catch Dark pre-jumping. For once Dark does pre-jump low enough, but he can get back to it. Oh, he's got the double. Daniel saves it. Wow, that is unbelievable. He's managed to knock that into the back corner. Somehow reading Dark's double tap. And not just saving it, but clearing it 
away from any danger. Good read though by Dark. He's going to tie the game. This, he, he slots himself right into the uh, Daniel who's steering into him. They have a careless flip by Daniel there. Should have jumped a little bit higher before flipping to the back corner. Dark goes for yet another fake kickoff. Well, he's sticking to his guns here. I can't say I agree with this because Daniel has taken the ball off the vast majority of these and he's done it again. He scores off the back of this. But Dark just wants to keep Daniel guessing, I suppose. He, he's got to stop doing it on the offset spawn. It's, <laughs> it's far too risky when Daniel's seen it this many times. But Daniel, the pillar of consistency. Can he keep it up? This is definitely a lot of pressure on him. Everyone expecting him to win this. And uh, USA already trailing by one series, thanks to Kalir's monumental effort against AJ. You know, we talked a lot about Dark's inconsistencies. You know, Daniel's got to be praised for his consistency when he's called upon to do the heavy lifting. In every competition he plays in, he always shows up. He is just simply one of the absolute best players in the world, no matter what game mode you put him in. Well, we see more Daniel aerial plays. Dark's cut him off here before any shot can occur. And Daniel gets the ball afterwards anyway. Stays low. Dark counters. And how's the recovery? It's a good one. Dark's going to tie the game. Massive defensive stand from Dark. Daniel looking for another low 50 50. He's trying to catch Dark pre jumping like he did in game four. And this time, Dark stays low enough. Half the game to go. We are completely tied up. It's a Daniel fake kickoff, but he's not managed to knock it into the back corner. He just doesn't have as much practice with these as Dark does. And it's Dark again, looking for the lead, and the top corner gives it to him. You've got to wonder, why has Daniel pulled the fake kickoffs out the bag in game five when everything seemed to be going so well for him? Fake kickoffs have been a disaster for both players in this game. And Dark's going to get another goal. It's just completely fallen apart for Daniel. He needs to stabilize. Dark runs it right through him. That's a clinical flick. Daniel tried to turn, and he didn't get near him. Does Dark have the discipline to play the clock in these positions? Will he even have to? It's another kickoff goal. Daniel is completely motionless. He tries to push the ball around the outside, but Dark's flipping the same way, and he's got the goal side approach. Risky kickoff by Daniel. And it's in the back of his net. Well, he's going to go goal side on this one to try and remedy the situation. Oh, great stuff from Dark. Perfect wave dash after bouncing the landing. Daniel stopped again. He can't believe it. We wondered if Dark had another gear to go to offensively. It turns out it's just the solid 50-50s that have gotten him into a strong position. Daniel now letting the ball bounce into his back corner intentionally. He's just trying to get something working here. But now he is in massive trouble. The only question that remains is whether or not Dark can stay composed. He's missed the boost. Daniel's tripping him up. But Dark recovers well. And Daniel's called GG's. You have got to be joking. Dark eliminates Daniel leaving just first killer for USA's A-team. A minute and 40 on the clock, but Daniel has had enough. Wow, that is insane. One of the biggest upsets in 1v1 history. And called early with a minute and 40 left on the clock. Daniel is out. First killer will have to beat Ams, Dark and Kaleers in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back series if USA's E-team is going to advance. Well, who had that one on their bingo card? <laughs> Definitely not me. What on earth just happened? Saudi Arabia's B-team have got USA's all-star lineup on the ropes.